Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. This video is going to be a look at working with metadata in Capture One. Capture One is a non-destructive raw converter. It's database driven, like Adobe Lightroom, and serves basically the same functions as Adobe Lightroom or On One Photo Raw, the two non-destructive raw converters that I cover on an ongoing basis. A number of you have expressed interest in Capture One. You're either evaluating it, some of you are already using it. So I thought it would be a good idea to take a look. I grabbed a trial version and I've taught myself how to use it reasonably well, although I'm certainly no expert. So let's crank this thing up and take it for a test drive. In the left rail of Capture One, we have a tab here designated by the little eye icon, and it opens up a metadata editor. And let's take the top three rows of these photos, for example, and we will select them. We will go to our metadata editor and we will select a template and we will apply the template to all these files. I'll click off and click back on and you can see that we have applied our Joe Photographer starter template to all these files. So the next step would be to go and do some captions. So we'll take this photo here, which was shot in a record store, and let's pull this palette out of the left rail and expand it a little so it's a little easier to work in. This is a cool feature. I like this, actually. And through the magic of cut and paste, we will put a bottom on this caption with the second sentence of our record store caption on here. And we did that file, that file, that file has not been done. We'll go back to this one. We will select it and we will use command or control click to select these other files in this group that have something to do with record stores. Now notice that this picture has a wide white highlight border around it. And these others that I selected have a narrow one. This is the primary selected picture. And these, I guess, are subsequently selected pictures or something like that. In any case, in Capture One, if I go here in my metadata tool and choose this double-ended arrow icon, I will copy from my primary selected picture to my others. We'll hit the button. We'll see what happens. Well, we now have this intermediate dialog, the adjustments clipboard, and it asks us what we want to copy from one picture to another. And we can turn on all our metadata fields. And once again, we surely probably do not want to copy ratings and color tags across. And in this particular case, I could copy all these fields because I just applied them with a template. They're, they're all the same. Or I could turn them all off and copy just my description or caption field, whatever I want to do. Let's do it that way. I'll hit the orange Apply button. And now we can see that the bottom of our caption is applied across all these different pictures. I'll click, whoops, I'll click somewhere to select no pictures. And I'll go back to my first picture and I'll go back down here in my caption, click in. And once again, to spare you witnessing my typing, I will just paste in the first line of this particular caption, the one that tells us exactly what's going on in this particular picture. And I can click off and repeat the process for all the rest of these photos. So next up, let's add some keywords. First, let's take our metadata tool and pop it back in the left rail. We'll go back to our photos and we will select all of our record store photos again. And we'll go to our keywords tool. And here we can type in some keywords. Records, for example. And I'll click, click twice actually to enter that keyword. And we'll do stores, 
same thing. We'll do retail, same, whoops. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's try this again. Retail, seriously, that's how you type it. And we'll pop that in. And yes, Capture One will work with hierarchical keywords. Yes, it will work with controlled vocabularies. Yes, it can import and export controlled vocabularies. They're of the Lightroom format, by the way. A controlled vocabulary from Photo Mechanic will require some editing in a text editor before it will work here. But in any case, now we have applied those keywords to all of our photos. We'll click off, we'll click on some random one of these photos, and there you have it. We have applied keywords to them. Now, these photos are all JPEGs, which is an embeddable file format. Metadata exists embedded into the actual format in this type of file. But the metadata that we've entered here exists only in Capture One's database. In most of our other non-destructive raw converters, this is the point where we would invoke a command to embed the metadata into these files. And that would preserve the metadata right in the file going forward, kind of no matter what happened. The program could crash, the database could be corrupted, we could move to another program, the files could go someplace else, whatever. The metadata information would be embedded straight into the files. In Capture One, we have to be aware that Capture One's developers made a conscious decision not to ever write into an original file. Be it that that file be a JPEG or a TIFF or a RAW file. It's the only program of this sort that I know that has that restriction. And philosophically, I can understand why they did it. Although everybody else in the industry is perfectly willing to write lossless header only information into these types of files. Frankly, back in the day, yes, I saw a lot of pictures that were corrupted by metadata operations to the headers, JPEGs we're talking about here. I haven't seen one of those in many years. TIFFs and PSDs are another story. Yes, indeed, I have relatively lately seen TIFFs and PSDs corrupted by header only write operations. So are the Capture One developers right or wrong? I don't know, you tell me. We just have to be aware of that behavior. We have to be aware that we can't write our metadata edits into JPEGs in Capture One. And if a JPEG comes into Capture One carrying metadata, yeah, Capture One will do a fine job of reading that metadata on export, I'm sorry, on import, and writing it into its database, but it will never be able to update it. So that picture may have one set of metadata embedded in the picture, and it may have an entirely different set of metadata living in the database in Capture One. Capture One will embed metadata upon export of a picture. So if we export a picture, here, we'll just do this one, we will get an exported picture in whatever format we choose, and it'll have our metadata embedded in it. When we do export, if we do it this way from this context menu, we have the choice of exporting original files or variants. Pretty much everything that we work with in Capture One is a variant, at least if we've worked with it. An original file is just that. If you export the original, you don't get any edits or metadata or anything new that you've done. Here's the export dialog, and in the middle of the export dialog, there's something called the recipe, and there's a tab here for metadata. And once again, we're presented with one of these tick box things, and we can write into the exported file various kinds of metadata. We can choose, once again, whether we want ratings and color tags on export. Usually I leave that on. Usually I leave all of this stuff on. Copyright, of course we want that. GPS coordinates, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Camera metadata, there's pretty much useless EXIF data. Usually I turn that off, and there we go. Keywords, this is kind of cool. We have the option to export all the keywords 
export none of the keywords, or export keywords only from certain libraries or controlled vocabularies, which could be useful in the stock photo business. Let's just choose all. We hit export and bang, there we go. Our picture has been exported and it will have its metadata embedded. Now there's another way to export from Capture One. If we go back over here to our left rail and we click this gear icon, we see tools that have to do with process recipes. And if you remember, I couldn't find a way to do a preset in the other export dialog. That's essentially what process recipes are, is their presets for exports. And they're stackable, no less. Here we're applying two of, one, two of them in this particular case. And here we have the same choices about metadata. And when you save a process recipe, you save all of this information. So we'll hit the button on this one, and it's just a tiny little JPEG and we only see it flicker, and boom, it's been exported. Now let's take a quick look at the metadata that we exported. This is EXIF tool output from a Capture One embedded exported file. And as we thumb down through this here, we see some interesting stuff. We see here in the EXIF fields, the so-called semantically equivalent EXIF fields that match some IPTC fields, the artist and the copyright principally, we see that we have indeed written information from our IPTC template into these fields. There was none in this picture before we applied the template. So there's the information from our template written into these fields. Capture One will read these fields if your camera writes to them. We'll populate the information into the metadata editor. You can choose to edit it there and overwrite it, or you can choose to overwrite it with a template. If you simply save it, it will copy the information from here into the IPTC fields. And if you overwrite it, it will replace the information with the IPTC version of the information. Okay, cool so far. That's the behavior that I actually recommend for that sort of thing. We continue to scroll down and we can see all of our fields that are in the IIM data block and they're all fine. And we can see the XMP fields that exist in the XMP data block and they're fine. And we will take a look here at the keywords in each of those data blocks. And the keywords on this test file were hierarchical keywords applied in Capture One. And we can see that they have been correctly written also as flat keywords in the keywords field. And if we scroll down to the XMP version of the keywords field, which is the XMP DC subject field, we can see that they match exactly. That's good for us. And we can see here that Capture One writes the proprietary Lightroom hierarchical subject field. This field allows a program, Lightroom itself is what Adobe had in mind, I'm sure, to keep hierarchical keywords hierarchical so that they can be edited and the relationships can be edited later on. Frankly, personally, I think that's a waste of time. I think the keywords should be in the normal keywords field in the normal way where they're accessible to all programs or all standards compliant programs. But the way it's handled here, which is exactly the same way, by the way, as it's handled in Lightroom, is fine. Keywords that are entered hierarchically will in fact be copied to the regular keyword field and they will exist there just in the normal way. So that's good. So basically what we have done here is we have written standards compliant high quality metadata to that exported file. Now, those files were JPEGs. Capture One's behavior with raw files that use sidecar XMP files is entirely different. Capture One will immediately write metadata to an XMP sidecar file. You don't have to do anything. It happens within a second or so. If you look at that file, 
in another program that can read and write XMP sidecar files, Photo Mechanic, for example, your metadata edits will be right there. You can edit in Photo Mechanic, which will do the same thing. It will immediately write to the XMP sidecar file, and Capture One will immediately read. So metadata interoperability between Capture One and other programs on RAW files is basically perfect. Nothing to worry about. Metadata interoperability between Capture One and other programs on embeddable files is a different story altogether. We do have that limitation that Capture One won't write to an original file, and there's no way to ask it to. In the other programs on embeddable files, you have to ask them specifically to write into the file to make them do it. And in Lightroom, you have to ask it specifically to write into XMP files as well. On One Photo Raw behaves the same way that Capture One does with Sidecar XMP files. It reads and writes them automatically. So basically, there are differences between programs and quirks, if you will, that you have to keep in mind when you're designing a workflow. This isn't the only program that has some limitations or some peculiar behaviors of its own. Now, on the read side, we have the same sort of thing going on again. As we know, it will read XMP sidecar files, no problem, anytime, every time. Embeddable file formats, on the other hand, here we go, say this file right here, which was captioned in Photo Mechanic, it'll read them on import, but it will not read them ever again. There is no way you can force a read from an embeddable file if it has been edited in a program other than Capture One. And this indeed stands in contrast with the other two non-destructive raw converters that I cover. Both of them can be forced to reread embedded metadata. This again, is something that you really have to keep in mind, particularly if you intend to use Capture One as an end-to-end -end solution, including as a dam, and particularly if you intend to use Capture One interoperably with other programs. Once you have your pictures marked up in Capture One, the search capability to find them, and here we have a free text search window, into which we can type something and Capture One will search across all searchable fields and return those files that match the search. And below here, we can turn off and on filters based on ratings and things like that, as we can in other programs. Here at the right edge of our free text search box, we have three tiny little dots, which we would expect to bring up some sort of settings menu. They don't, they bring up this advanced search box which is actually really pretty capable. It's a repeater dialog so that you can add as many search criteria as you want. You can search in any field or any field that you choose. You can choose an operator contains, equals, or significantly does not contain, which is a Boolean not. And you can enter search terms. Here, you can choose a Boolean AND to connect your various search criteria, or a Boolean OR to connect them. I haven't figured out any way of mixing both ANDs and ORs, but nevertheless, this is as much functionality as we have pretty much in any of these programs that are a converter or a browser and also a desktop dam. We can do search presets. That's a good thing. And we have a button here to create smart albums based on the criteria of a search, or to simply create a static album with the return from our search. You can do that in any of these programs in one fashion or another. It's not hard, frankly, in any of them. But I really do appreciate the fact that you can do this in one button, in one click here. That's pretty clever. And Lightroom users, by the way, are probably aware that in Lightroom, the only way you can really search effectively is by creating a smart album first and searching within that smart album. 
So that is kind of a pain in the neck. So it really appears to me that in search functionality, Capture One has done very well. So that brings us back to the big question. Can you live with those read and write limitations on embeddable files? And I tried to think of some sort of pithy, clever, rule of thumb sort of thing that I could say here to generalize. And I really can't. The truth is, it's a really granular decision. And you're going to have to think through your own workflow and see how that will work. How often would those limitations be an issue in your workflow? How often would they present a threat to data preservation? And do you have a workaround to get around it? Most of you, many of you, some of you probably can figure that out and work out a happy relationship and live happily with Capture One if you like the rest of the program and choose to go with that way. It's just a fact that for some people, it just won't work, and those things will be a showstopper. So there you have it. There's a quick view of working with metadata in Capture One. Now, I did this based on using a trial version of Capture One. I'm no expert in the operation of this program. If I have missed anything or if I have made any mistakes, please jump in the comments and let me know. And let me know what you think of Capture One if you're thinking about it. Are you thinking about adopting it? Should I adopt it as another one of the programs that I cover on an ongoing basis? Let me know what you think. As always, jump in the comments here or on the blog or on social media. And until next time, mind your metadata.